Okay, we could the Tate of Ashanan, Patriot Aleph, second column. Oh, yesterday we got off <laughs> about cars and, and food. Okay, uh, like 20 lines in the middle of the page. That's where we're up to. Middle of the page, second column. Okay. The Alter Rebbe started the Maimah Shema Yitzah Hashem Elokein Hashem Echod and he asked why does it say twice Hashem Hashem Elokein Hashem Echod. Secondly, why did Anshi Knesset Zagadayla Institute Baruch Shem between Shema and Vahayim Ve'ahavta? And he said Shema means two meanings. Shema means to understand. Shema means to gather. So he said like this. Um, Okay, that the purpose is that even the Yetzirah should be subdued to Hashem, submission to Hashem. So we say Shema twice a day. Okay, yet we don't come to the level of Yahavta. Officially, through Echad, we're supposed to come to really love Hashem. But the fact is, we don't love Hashem, we love world. So why is that? So he starts explaining, the Pasuk says you should choose life, right? I'm giving you life and death, choose life. So the Alter Rebbe says, which crazy person is going to choose not life? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so he says in this, we have to, in the middle of the page uh, of Yudal, the second column, we need to understand, what is the definition of life? The Alter Rebbe says, I mean, the Pasuk says, look, I'm giving you today life and death, choose life. Now, what does life mean? In Iksiv, it says in the Pasig, Vayemer Alekim Yehidoki Hashem said, Let there be a heaven. Vimavdal, and it should separate between the higher waters and the lower waters. Vayas Alekim Asuraki Hashem made the heaven. Vayavdal, Ben Amayim Hashem Mitach Asuraki, it separated between the water below the heaven and between the water which is on top of the heaven. So he says, Tzorch Lahovin, Lo Mashina Bamayim Azeh, why did Hashem change the text of this utterance? More than all the other my modem. Shenama in Yinabdah Sarakiyash they palmim. Because here, by all creation says Hashem said, let it be and it became. Here Hashem says like this. Hashem made the heavens to split. Hashem said, let there be a heaven that splits between higher and lower. And then it says again, Hashem made the heaven that split. It, it's different than all the other creations. Because the other creation, Hashem said it once. Here, the Pazik sang it twice. Achine, he says like this. The Psaudi, the Pazik says, in my own flesh, I will understand a, a godliness. So he's explaining now all these concepts by explaining what life is by a human being. Okay, so he says like this. Kol Adam, the whole life of the person, comes from the heart. You know, the heart pumps blood to all the parts of the body. The creation of voice and speech goes from the heart to the lung, from the rear, from the lung to the windpipe. Even the head, even the brain, also gets life from that because if there's no blood going from the heart to the head, the, the head can't live either. So basically everything comes from the, the, the original sources of life, it comes from the heart. By the way, that's one of the interesting reasons why according to 99% of Poskim, that life is defined by respiratory, not brain dead. In other words, you could be brain dead Medically, you're dead, but your brain is dead. But halachically, you're still alive because the heart is still functioning. The heart is still breathing, respiratory. Because the primary chayis comes from the heart. This refers to spiritual life that comes from the heart. That speech comes from it and thinking comes from it. The same thing from the heart, the blood flows to all the limbs. We know, first of all, the Pasik says, Blood is the nefesh. Now, what's the origin of all blood? From the heart. 
heart takes the old blood, makes it into new blood, and circulates it around the body. So the heart is really the source of life. Isn't the heart the Sahara? No, he's speaking here physically. The physical heart is the source of life. Now, the Nefesh Abamis finds itself in the heart, but so does the Nefesh Olakith. I mean, the Nefesh is primary in the heart. I mean, sorry, Nefesh is primary in the brain, and it goes to the heart. Nefesh Abamis is primary in the heart, goes to the head. But he's, here he's speaking physically. He's not. By the way, our physical life comes in Nefesh Abamis. Unless if somebody's a tzaddik who killed the Yitzhahara, so then they're living from the Nefesh Olakith. But everybody else, we live from, what gives us life? Not the godly soul. The animal soul is what gives us life. That's what after the episode in the first paragraph of the time. The splash is, but dama odom lahachis and so on. To give us life. Life comes from the Shabbat. Which primarily finds itself in the heart because all desires come from the heart. But it's interesting, Tanya Dal Rebbe says about the Cholala Smoli, he says the expression, Shein Beidam, there's no blood. So somebody asked the Rebbe, it's not true, because on the left side of the heart there's also blood. So the Rebbe says what Dal Rebbe means, not that there's no blood, there's no fresh blood. The, the old blood comes into the left side, and then the new blood, the, beef, the fresh blood, so to speak, comes to the right. So when Dal Rebbe says, Shein Beidam, it means there's no Fresh blood, it's old blood. Recycled. Recycled. And then it says like this Where does this blood come from? And the growth of the person. From the food, it becomes refined in the stomach. And in the liver, the good part of the food goes up to the heart, which it becomes blood. And the junk, you know, you eat food, right? The good of the food becomes blood, and the junk of the food goes out in the waste. This all comes from the level of separation, which is the liver. You know, the Trevor says like this. Just like in, in the world, there's the heaven that splits higher and lower, the liver is a filtering system, right? So what is the filtering system to separate between the good and the bad? So he, that, the, li- the liver actually separates between the breathing and all the other limbs. So it is also in, by Hashem, in exiv tzur levavi, the rock of my heart. So it says like this. So Hashem is called Sur Levavi, the rock of my heart, meaning Hashem is the source of life. Just like the heart is the source of life, so is Hashem. And you give life to everything. So he says like this. So it says like this. The heart gives sustenance, okay? And he separates between good sustenance, bad sustenance. Similar to the heaven that's split between the higher levels, the higher water, and the lower waters. Now water represents sustenance. So now that I'm saying over here, there's two levels of sustenance coming from Hashem. There's the higher waters, and there's the lower waters. It's like Huh? Yeah, well, he's going to say, one second, he says, the higher waters, now water represents tainu, enjoyment, pleasure. That's tainu ga'el yain, which is tisane ga'el Hashem, the enjoyment of it, because you said ganeiden, all that. And the second one represents the earthly waters, represent the pleasures of this world, come through the heavens, okay, so he says like this, the function of the heaven is to separate between higher and lower. 
just like the, the heart is the source of, of life, and then you have the liver that makes the separation between the good and the bad. In creation, Hashem made, and there's not only in creation, it's in every single person. There's higher waters and there's lower waters. Initially, they were all mixed together. I mean, everything was Kedusha. Then Hashem decided to make a world, Dino Betachtelen. So Hashem had to make higher waters, which represents godly enjoyment. Water represents enjoyment. And then there's the lower water, the earthly waters. The earthly waters represents the physical pleasures. Okay? Very simple. <laughs> they, don't, they don't really ever mix, mix up. In the... I'll tell you something interesting. What? Is there a time when, they, when they, I know it rains down and stuff goes up, but, but other than that, it's not really mixing anymore. It's not mixing anymore. But nevertheless, when, the, when Hashem made the Rakia, okay, the Medrus says, that said this brings it down a lot, the Medrus says that the Maim Tachtainin, the lower waters, came before Hashem, and they said, Anan be'in and lameve malka. We also want to be, you separate us, you, you know, you put those things close to Hashem, and you dumped us down. So the waters came with a complaint. What do you mean? We also want to be close to Hashem. So the Madri says, Hashem said to him, I'm going to give you this Mayim as simple as Beis HaSheva, which was drawn from the earthly waters, and that's going to be the ultimate Simcha. Of Simcha is Beis HaSheva, when they drew water in the Mishkan, in the Mizmeah, from uh, the water in, in, in Sukkot. So there is that aspect of the Mayim Tachtainin, Beichin, the expression of the Madri, they were crying that they also want to be. Now, so why did Hashem make the Rakia? He could have just kept it as is. Because Hashem wants to make higher and lower, life, death, and he wants, down here we should scream, we also want Talukus. That's the whole purpose of Dira B'Tachtayim. So he says, um, What? He said he's not a Thomas. This point that the water below the Tivus of this world is still wants to be transformed to Tivus of Hashem. Meinach was also both ways. By the flood, the Pasik says, the higher things and the lower things. That's what he says in the Zoyar. It says in the year 500 of Neach's life when the Mabal happened. Yeah? So it says, Niftuchutayim is Rabba, the water from the Pasha's Neach. It said, the water is from the Neach. Barubis has Shemayim Niftuchu. And the windows of the heaven opened. Yeah? So it says in the Zayar, in the year 5500, it was 500 years of, so it says in the year 5500, there's going to be ultimate revelations of Torah from above, and there's going to be ultimate revelation of secular knowledge. In the last 250 years, yeah, or more, or whatever, there was the, the, the revelation of scientific things, medical things, that didn't exist in the desire predicted that already. There's been saying, Taita and now you Taita in, in, in the secular wisdom. And that's all is the preparation. There was a whole long sikh about it. But that's all in the preparation for Mashiach. Because the ultimate revelation of Mashiach is that world as world sees Alokus. And therefore, world as world will become revealing Alokus through the scientific and whatever. So the, is the only water that we use from above the mikveh or the rest like in the, in the Well, you can have a mikveh from a well also. Okay. In fact, a well mikveh, mikveh from a well, <laughs> is greater than, uh, than a, a, a rainwater. <clears throat> Therefore, certain tumas only become in a mayan, like a zav only needs a mayan and a Mayan is mitar b'kolshu. A mikveh, rainwater, needs 40 saw to be kosher. A Mayan, a well, as long as it covers you, I'll give you an if a needle became tummy, in certain types of tummy, yeah? 
So a tiny needle, this, will still need a mikvah 40 saw to purify it. But if it's a well, a natural well, as long as it covers this, it's pure. Yeah. What? A Maris of Maya. No, but over there it's not. It's a Gal, not a Maya. What? I don't know if I understood that. Did they have to use any special water in the Mishra? Sometimes they took from the water, like by sight, they took from the water. Or by Simchat Beis Sheva, they drew water from underneath the Mishka. Because that's the lower waters becoming elevated. So he says, V'zeo b'chayat b'chayim. Now we can answer. The Rebbe asked the question before, what does it mean you should choose life? How can anybody think of not choosing life? So he says, what does it mean b'chayat b'chayim el yeinim, which is eitz ha'chayim. V'tainug el yon limis b'tainug em gashmi. To despise the physical pleasures that come to mind t'achtainim al eitz ha'daf t'evira which is represented by the concept of the Itzadas. In other words, the Alt Rebbe says, what is a Bechat, a Bechayim? He's not talking about physical life. He's saying you should choose life of godliness versus wor worldly, earthly uh, life of pleasures. So he says, How does a person come to this ability? To choose godliness, godly pleasures over earthly pleasures is Aydeish Krishma Shachas Vi'arvis. By laying, the reading the Shema morning and evening, because Shema is, in, in the Sefer Torah, the Ayin, you know, Shema Yisrael Shema, the, the Dalit of Mechud is very big, and the Ayin of Shema is very big. Okay, so it says in the Farshim of Chumash, it's aid. Ayin Dalit is Da, you should know, and it's also Eid, a testimonial that Hashem is. But he says Shema is Shem Ayin, the name Ayin. What does Ayin mean? Ayin is Ayin Midas. Ayin, the 70, represents the seven Midas, each one composed of 10. Like we know all the number 70, yeah? Yaakov has 70 descendants going down to Egypt. There's 70 nations, there's 70 languages, there's 70 uh, whatever. Why? Because it's represented by the seven midas, each one composed of 10, so it's 70. The seven midas, l'cho Hashem ha'gdula v'ha'gvura. Zayim midas, kol echod kolu mi'eser. V'shayim hu eisis me'amit. Eisis me'amidas. Shu'ad anim shu'um is pashit. The ones that just draw this pasha, the savas, yashmiayin, to create something from nothing. So this refers basically to the seven midas that created the world. Okay? So what is Shema? The realization that the Danish Shema is Baruch Mechayim Membe'atzme. Shema is what the 70 midas. Seven meters is what gives chayas to the world. Kinis of Shmei Levadi. His name is exalted. Sheshmei hu niska. Hey, dal eretz shemayim. He says, Afilo al eretz shemayim. Even in heaven and earth, it's only a ray of the name. What do we say in Davin from Tillim? Yahalu lo shem Hashem. Praise the name of Hashem. Kinis of Shmei Levadi. God's name is exalted. Haidei, a ray of the name, is in heaven and earth. Meaning, that's what I've been saying here. Name Shem Ayin, Shema, Shem Ayin, represents the name of the 70 Midas. The 7 Midas each one composed of 10. Now, that is what gives life to the world. But even that, because the Midas, the seven meters is what gives existence to the world. The first day chesed, second day gvur, and so on. Even today, the highest of Sunday gets some chesed, Monday comes from gvur. And so the name of Hashem, the Midas, is what gives life to the world. But even that, 
that's also removed from the world. It's exalted from the world. What gives actual life to the world? The ray of his name, i.e. the ray of the seven Midas. And that's what Shema, the meditation of Shema represents, that the Jew has to understand that the whole universe and all its earthly pleasures and desires and temptations and all that, all the good things that we think exist in the world, is only a ray of the Midah. It's not even the Midah. It's a ray of the Midah that make, creates the universe. So when a person realizes that the whole universe is, as the expression in Russia is called Chaykat Plevina, which means Gordish, nothing should be nothing. And then when you do mitzvahs, you connect to the essence. So then a person, when by meditating, meditating in Shema, comes to realization, at least to a certain extent, that the real pleasures should be from Elokos rather than from enjoying life. Now you see this also in life. Uh, let's use the example of teenagers because that's where you see clearly. You can have a teenager that wants to enjoy life because they're the ones that really like enjoying life. So because of that, they won't do well in school. Or they won't go to school. Even if they go to school, they're not into the school. Now, a more intellectual teenager that has more substance to them will realize, yeah, but these desires of having a good time as a teenager are fleeting moments, and then I'll never get a degree, I'll never get a job, and I'll have problems. So again, the Chacham, as the Gemara says, sees the future. The fool sees the now. So you see this clearly in, in life, you see, but, but this applies to each one of us too. The teenagers, you can have two types of teenagers. You can have ones that enjoy life, but yeah, now it's a great time. They're really having a good time, they think. But again, it doesn't last. And then what's the future? What's the future holding for you? And then you can have another person that understands, right now it's great, but let's look long term. Long term, I have to do well in school. I have to get a degree and a good job and make a living. So. That's the same thing in life. A person realizes through the meditation of Shema that all the fleeting pe pleasures of the world are not going to get to me anywhere because they're all only from a ray of Hashem, a ray of the ray of the ray of the ray, and that's the life of all these pleasures. So why should I want these if I can have the ultimate goal? So yeah, it's much more work, and it takes meditation to understand that this is what's really good and this is what's fake good, temporarily good. And that's what happens. That's the meditation of Shema. And that's what a person has to meditate. That all these temptations, that's what he says, shame ayin, you should know that the whole world is, is shame ayin, meaning it's all coming from the Midas. And even the Midas, it's only a ray of the Midas, not the Midas themselves. That's what he said. Um, it's even in heaven and earth, and and that's the deep word of Hashem. Hashem Shemaim Nasu, which has the division of time. Okay, when Hashem spoke, when did time begin? We learned already. Time began when there's place. If there's no place, there cannot be time. Time, is, by definition, means how long something, something exists. If there's no something, it can't exist. So therefore, like the famous question that the philosophers ask, why did Hashem create the world earlier? And the Magid says, because before Hashem created the world, there was no time. So you can't ask the question, why didn't he create the world earlier? Because there is no time. So when did time begin? When Hashem created the world. The first day, second day, third day. So that's already a minute revelation of Hashem that's connected to time and place. And that's which connected the world. That's what's created the world, which created time and place. And yet, not only did Sunday and Monday, every second, Hashem is recreating the world. 
Vainin ho kasha bechol yem v'yem is gala. Dvar yem v'yem ay next page. I know bechinas ac is v'adibon. Every continuously there's a creation of the letters in the speech. Anim shem bechinas midas shem yem ahu meaning and every Sunday or every second really. Nimshach ac is he are from the level of chesed. V'yem beis was the heaven that split. Yem Shabbos on the day of Shabbos, Hashem stopped creating. <clears throat> so let, let's speak in a physical sense to understand it in a spiritual sense. When you work, you get tired. Why do you get tired? Because all your power went into the thing that you that you did, right? Your power leaves you. So when you rest, you get the power back. That's what it is. You get tired because all your power has left you. And then you rest, you get untired, meaning the power has come back. So what's in creation? Kaviyoch by Hashem. It's not that Hashem worked and gets tired and he needs to take a break. But Hashem revealed godliness connected to world in the six days of creation. Shabbos Hashem stopped creating. That means Hashem elevated himself to a place above time and place, above creation, above creation. And then Hashem gets to be re revealing the Kayachas of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's why Chesidus explains what's the concept of Shabbos. During the week, Hashem creates. Remember, Shabbos doesn't mean you're not allowed to work because flicking the switch does not work. What it means is, on Shabbos, you're not allowed to create. So, in six days, Hashem created. Shabbos, He stopped creating. That means in the six days of the week, Hashem is revealing himself as a connection to world as creator. Therefore, what's our obligation during the week? A person has to work, create. Because again, it's not the definition of work, it's creativity. So when a person creates during the week, they connect to the level of Hashem that creates. He creates, we're creating. Shabbos Hashem stopped creating meaning. Hashem then reveals a level of godliness above world. He disassociates himself from creation, from world. So therefore when we stop creating on Shabbos, i.e. we show a Shabbos, so then what happens is we connect to the infinite level of Hashem which is above creation. That's the whole concept of Shabbos according to Chesedes. Because we have to connect to Hashem. During the week, Hashem is creator, we create. Hashem above creation, Shabbos, we're above creation. That's the whole concept of Shabbos. A person, like he thinks, he speaks. When you stop speaking and stop thinking, or whatever, you go back to your original source, you get your kerchus back. That's the whole concept of resting. So ideally, again, what's the purpose of sleeping, of resting, of vacation, of all that? Here, Kava, what's the purpose of sleeping? To rejuvenate, rejuvenate, to become, get the kerchus back, to continue. The time to that. The time to that.